What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee, and I'm here to talk to you about Two Lost Distribution. They are one of the most technologically advanced distributors in music. They distribute to more stores than any distributors around. They distribute, uh, they give you 100% of your royalties. They only charge you $3 a month, and you have an instant option to get an advance from these guys. So if you're watching this and you want to be in the music business and you're trying to figure out how to get help, I'm here to tell you, go to twolost.com and use the word God's as your coupon code and you get the first three months free hey everyone it's dream your k verde and queen it's rick the negotiator and this is ray daniels aka the culture referee and welcome to the culture report presented by the god show (laughs) today we have a guest and this is the last time i'm going to introduce her because she's going to be here a lot uh my sister uh one of the smartest women i know and she is so witty and so funny and i had to have her back on the culture report Let's give it up for Tar St. Louis. Let's go. Talking about me. AKA St. Boogie. AKA St. Boogie. Yes. Okay. AKA been dope her whole life. The, and the, you the know, Haitian the Haitian sensation. I'm about to say been, oh. been repping for Haiti <laughs> since the day I'm. So, Young Safase herself. Okay. Shout out, to, <laughs> shout out to our sponsor. Shout out to Yoko Vaca. Shout out to Toten Carry. And shout out to Two Loss Distribution. Uh, and shout out to you for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Because that's the way we give you guys this great content. And yeah, let's go. Let's get into it. Come on, Dream. Okay, let's get into it. So as everyone knows, Dr. Dre finally got his start on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. What y'all think about that? I think it was deserved. I thought he'd been had it. It's well deserved. I did too. I thought he had one already. Uh, arguably the greatest producer in the history of hip hop. Yes, for sure. Ta, Definitely got you got a face. I want to hear your face. Go ahead. I, go ahead. I'm going to say something right after you. Um, remember when like we didn't know shit about the people who gave us great art and we could just celebrate the art? Yes. That's how I feel about Dre and a lot of other people. I wish that we could just celebrate the art. I wish that we didn't know the things we know. Or mm. um, I wish that maybe he would speak to the elephant in the room. Do we all know what the elephant is in the room is? If people are mad at him about the abuse. They said that he, he, he beat up a woman. Yes. Didn't he they pay didn't her, though? Say, no, I mean, listen, it oh, happened. That payout was crazy. It happened. It impacted her career way more than it impacted his. Um, the 80s were crazy. The 90s were crazy. Um, cultural norms have changed, right? So there's some shit that we could say back then that we can't say no more. But <laughs> so much shit we can't say. So back much then. shit that we can't uh, say or do anymore. Yeah. And we all catch ourselves, yes. right? Like, my my horrible, horrible, problematic thing is because of Jay Z. Anytime somebody says somebody's Indian, my answer is always, you know, no, you know, you're from New York. If they say they Indian, red dot or feather, red oh red dot or feather, which yes. is horrible. Girls, like that girls, shit girls. that's fucking horrible. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. nobody should say no shit like that. But <laughs> I didn't even know about I'm that. I'm an '80s baby. Like yeah. that's kind of where my brain grows. But he's never addressed it, and I think that's the bigger thing. I think that if Dre would sit down and have a conversation and say, I was a young man, or I was on drugs, or, or it's not cool. whatever, or it's not cool, I don't, I don't condone it, or whatever, but he's never spoken to it. And so that's the reason why any time that he does anything, people are like, um... But hold on, I'm going to challenge you. Okay. They don't do that when Dre puts out a record. It feels like if Dre drops an album, if Dre, drops, if Dre does drops new headphones, everybody is cool. My only problem is, is that when he's being celebrated, I don't care who you are in this world. You've pissed somebody off. Right. You've done something wrong. Right. There was an act in the movie Revenge of the Nerds. It was an right. act. But, but guess what? Back then, that was norm, right? right. Was, like, in today's term, it's like, holy shit. But right. back in the 80s, it was like, he got the girl. The movie Weird Science is a whole celebration it's, of a fucking exactly. inappropriate ass inappropriate in, in relations between young men and women. A young man and an yeah. older woman. Yeah. But, um... When's the last time Dre dropped something? He dropped that. He dropped the the. I put it like this: when Straight Outta Compton came out, I didn't hear about it. Okay, so okay. at that time there was also, I, if I'm not mistaken, we can go back and look, but I'm pretty sure Straight Outta Compton came out before the yeah, Me Too movement sure. really started hitting the way that it is. So what I'm going to tell you is mm. that there were women complaining when the music was coming out. Listen. It just wasn't as loud. Mm. It wasn't the same topic or there wasn't the same space can, for them to talk about it. Can, can we talk about that, though? I okay. want to talk, by the way, I'm only saying can we talk about that because to me, that's the problem. The problem is, is that there's two problems. The problem is, is that it's like the boy crowd wolf. It's like when you, someone says it, we want to take it serious. But then we also take by taking it serious. We also are 
punishing someone else without the facts. So it's kind of like, I really be wanting to know, like, like, what do people want us to do? Because I do believe that we should separate the art from the artist. By the way, whoever's listening, if anybody's listening, the Cosby show should be available. Right. Sure, Just because sure, Bill sure. Cosby did what he did doesn't mean Keisha Knight Pulliam, Malcolm Jamal Warner, Lisa Bonet, all those people, Felicia Rashad, all those people have to suffer because of something that he did. And just because of what he did does not take away what that show meant. That's my point. Culturally. Yeah. And true. what it showed yeah. people. And, and the fact that it laid the ground, it made it possible for, um, for Marlon Wayans to have, was it Marlon? No, yeah, it was Mar Marlon. Damon. Damon. Damon Wayans to have his show. It made it possible Steve for, Harvey, for Bernie Blackish Mac, yeah. to be the success that Blackish is, right? Like it opened the door for a lot of people. I'm totally with you on that. And I'm told, I'm also with you, as unpopular as it may sound. I'm also with you about the crying wolf shit. No, no, but but, but I'm, I'm only asking women because I'm because my thing is this: is that I want as a man we want to help, but I, I, we I guess as a man because I've had friends say things have happened, and mm -hmm. I swear to God, I was like, for real. I'm talking about with people that we know. I'm like him, right? For, and I was like, why you don't say nothing? And it's weird because that women feel afraid to speak up yes but then it's also fucked up because when they speak up they can get shunned and now they're ashamed so it's like i'm just looking for the balance the balance is how it like hold the men accountable and not the women how though mm. the so, same way that like like remember we had that yeah. conversation last time i was here like it's certain people that you've told me you personally yeah. because you love me and i'm your for sister sure. you'll be like hey man so and so is a creep or such and such yep. as you know like this yeah, thing whatever sure. or y'all have conversations in front of us yep are you having that same conversation with that person? Absolutely, fucking loop. And that's where it is. Is I think that like it's always a, uh, you know, women should watch how they're dressing or like tell your daughter don't go up in some boy's room that she doesn't know. Da -da 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 -da. Exactly. What are y'all telling y'all sons? Well, that's always my question, that, right? That, like my nephew's yeah. going to college. Now, that, now you now you going not somewhere. Not now you're going their somewhere. Their right? By the way, their I want to ask Rick a that. question. Rick, who's the first person to tell you not to trust women? Not to trust women? My mother. That's yeah. the first person yeah. that told me not to trust women was my mother. My mother. She's a woman. There's every man in here, right? Mm -hmm. So when we speak about women, and it's almost like we rather protect our own because I've been told not to trust women by a woman. Right. I've been told not to do too much for a woman by a woman. When I'm having, like, as a man, I am soft on women. I am soft. My daughter cries. I don't, like one day, guys, I'm being honest with y'all. This is, a, 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 I'm not proud to say this, but one day I, my, I was taking my daughter to school and literally she was crying her whole way and I kind of, I made her do some affirmations and then when we got closer to the school, we pulled and she started crying and she was like, and I was like, what's wrong? And my daughter, six, is crying tears in front of the school saying, daddy, please forgive me. I'm just having an emotional day right now. Oh, oh my God, six years are way too much listen, conversation right now. Listen, Ty. <laughs> I literally, the world, I, world ended. She don't got to go to school. Ever. Yeah. So her mom it's is like, so I call life. her mom and I'm like, I'm in front of the school. She's like, okay. I'm like, I can't take her in. I'm sorry. She's sitting in my lap crying. What? Well, let's talk about Man, that. She pulled the fuck up. Let's talk about that. She <laughs> opened the door, grabbed her by her head, and took her to school. Her right. And I was like, I could never do that as so a man. So let's talk about, let's talk about that real quick, thing. right? <laughs> let's talk about that real quick. Please. And let's break down the fact that Please. school, in addition to teaching you things, obviously, right? Yep. The primary function of the way that the American school system works is to make you a good employee. Right. Yes. Absolutely. That's why they reward you in school when you have perfect attendance. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then, so, because they want you to be the employee that has a shit ton of PTO that never takes it. Yep. They want you to be the person that's going to put in extra time. So, all that to say, your daughter should be able to have an emotional day and yeah. not go to school that day. And I, by the way, I was okay with it. I would have took her to the office with me to work and I was fine. But her mother was like, what? Now, mind you, if that was my <laughs> six-year-old son <laughs> saying he had an emotional day and his mother was in the car, I would have pulled the fuck up. Like, get your ass out the and car. You. Mm -hmm. But my point is, is that men understand men and women understand women. Yes. We have to start in our household. Yes. By saying black women, single black women especially, stop telling your sons not to trust women. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and tell him how to treat women or how to pick the right women. Okay. Because... Yeah. Some women you can trust. Like I've never looked, thought twice about. Why you. are we not starting by saying black men when you know you have a son and you're not with his mother? Make sure you're having conversations with him. Why is the mother? Because because we heard from a mother. 
That's fine. You heard from your mother. Why, but if you why, heard, why can't we say the mother? You said single women. No, no, I was no, no. I'm speaking about okay. single. I'm Go speaking ahead. to the demo, and that's fair. Like. You don't have to say that to people in my house because I'm in my house with my right, kids. Exactly. So what I'm speaking about is is that if you are a woman, because like if you every young brother that's going to the NBA, what's the first thing he want to do with his first check? Get some bitches. No. Nope. Go to nope. strip club. Buy a house for his mother. <laughs> Buy a house for his mother. That is the second thing, Dream. <laughs> I love her. <laughs> I love you for that. She ain't lying. That's Get, the first that's thing. The that's the second thing. thing. That's the second thing. No, that's the second thing they do. <laughs> that's just amazing. Get some bitches. Get some strippers. No, no, that's not where I was going. Oh, they buy their mother a house. Yeah. I want to take care of my mom. Black men, like two, I always say a huge problem is Tupac says, even though it's a crack fiend, mama, you was always a black queen. Then if that's the case for your mama, that's the case for every woman. Right. It can't be my mama is special, but y'all ain't. There you By go. the way, we were just talking last night. We was just talking last night about how many black men end relationships because of the nature of the relationship with their mother. That's true. They yes. can't let go of that umbilical cord. Absolutely. And they're like, Mom's and I was telling and I, but but shouldn't you be? See, yeah, now, now I'm asking y'all, as a, as a son, I'm asking y'all, because it's like, I yeah, can't imagine you, you doing should, for my woman and not doing for my mother also. Right. Mm -hmm. But I think that, like, you gotta so, have balance and learn how to separate the two. This is my mom. This is the one woman I'm with because she could do things for me. My mom can't do. But at the end of the day, that's still my mom. But so I you think have some his, type of balance between the two, right? But I think to Ray's point, and that's the thing that like a lot of times people will be like, oh, like you hear a lot of men will say, well, I was this way until I had a daughter. Man, but every woman is somebody's daughter. Mm, so why did right. you have to have a, you didn't have no sisters you ain't had no female friends like yeah. you never dated anybody that you cared about so like why did it have to be until now they don't a want daughter? they don't want the men doing right. their daughter how they did the woman That's right why. but i agree with you though ray like i think that like we do have to so there is a very prevalent conversation yep. on social media that's what i want to have that's a lot of like pitting us against each other yep mm -hmm. and people like you and i know that when you step off of the internet that's not really what's happening in the world yep. right like every parent is not a single parent every father is not an absentee father as a matter of fact they just showed that um in the united states women women um marriage is there are more people getting married and there are less divorces. Like the rate of marriages yeah, is going up that's and the beautiful. rate of divorces is going down, yeah. right? So everybody is not at every, everybody's throat. Everybody's not hating each other. But there's a bunch of people who are not, um, not receiving the proper guidance that are being really, really, really loud. So like uh, the, the women that want a $100,000 man that don't understand it, like for you to be with a six-figure nigga, you got to be in six-figure rooms, baby girl. You're not doing period, that with $30,000. Period. Facts. A month in she and clothes. I'm not either, and it's fine. Well, no, I'm around six figure niggas. You, we yeah. were just in a room full of six or seven figure niggas a few right. minutes ago. You, I'm, right. in, I'm not really too far from. But you, you, you're doing good. Yep. The point being, you know, like we have to. I think we do have to get to a point where the conversations are less about pointing the finger. Because right? because I was yeah. gonna say because like I put out a clip recently today mm -hmm. where I was just basically saying. I was asking, I was speaking about how I asked a white friend, where do white men come? Because we have, we know where black men come because we have baby daddies and step daddies. And to me, that feels like something very prevalent in our community. To me, man, they eat my ass alive. Why are you, who, why is more white women than me? I'm like, bro, I care about us. Yeah, and for me, and, and, and for me, it's like, why can't? We speak to each other about each other. Why right. is it? Why is comparison bad? Comparison is how we got here. Like motherfuckers, motherfuckers was playing basketball, throwing a ball. Yeah. And then here come motherfucking <laughs> Bill Russell, 360 Duncan. Right. Why do they want him? That's He's right. better than them. We can see that. No one said, why are we comparing Bill Russell to the white black player? Bro, comparison is how we measure things. I, I just feel like especially black women because you just did it Todd and I know why you did it for the sake of the argument but as soon as I say as a man every man say women taught us then I say women do this why you ain't talking to men well I mean well technically I've never told my son not to trust a woman I told my never would tell little Raymond because I know what that would torture I know how that would yeah. torture him because he'll never find real love because he won't trust anybody so for me I feel like for us to go forward as a community we have to be okay with being criticizing and we got to stop fucking getting mad when people are talking like it disgusts me if you if I'm in the music business I make so much money in it if I saw people talking about how bad it was I wouldn't say mind your business 
Yeah. Why are you? I don't think like that. I want right. to hear another perspective. Yep. I right. want to hear someone with a unique perspective that helps me see things that I might not have saw that makes me better or makes us better. And to me, and that's why I'm asking, look at what I'm doing. I'm saying as a man to the women, how can we better serve you guys if you guys were assaulted by a man? How can we better serve you guys if you guys were done by a man? Like, how can I? So I want to know how to do that's better. My, ans- my answer to you is one, hold men accountable. It's two, be honest in your circles like even if your circle is not a bunch of fucked up dudes but like what you just said just now the fact that like all of you can say that your mothers are who taught you not to trust a woman there's something to unpack there and that doesn't mean well whoa it's a woman's fault no like it's you know what i'm saying like there's something to discuss there there's something for us to figure out there's something to understand about why your mother was the one that said it yep. um i think holding men accountable I think also making sure that we're having the same conversations with young men as we are with young women, because I don't think that that usually happens, right? I think that the conversation with your daughter is keep your legs closed, and the conversation with your son is, oh, you're 18, let's go to the strip clubs. Let's go get some condoms. Which is the reason why y'all are so pissed about Sexy Red. No! Because Sexy Red is talking about fucking... Y'all see how I need that transition? I love her. Y'all see that? I love her. I love her. I'm sorry. I, listen, I want to say something. I love, personally love Sexy Red. She's herself. I think, but not even that. You look at it from a music standpoint. Right. She she's makes making better songs than every female right now. Right. And maybe it's because she's oh, not taking wait. us up. Yes. Better songs? Every rapper. Hold on. Yeah. Every female Wait, rapper. Hold on. Let's let let. I'm sorry. Let me go ahead. Let me let you reset us, Dream. Because we jump we jump right over. I need to let me drink some water while you let us. <laughs> Where we at with it? So what? What y'all think the problem? What's the problem with her success? Why is everybody so mad at Sexy Red? She comes out here talking about fuck my baby daddy, all these things. And they have a problem with her, but she makes hits. So what is the problem with her success? I think is it only, because she's ratchet. I think or the only people, the only men that have a problem with sexy red are insecure men. Mm. I think the only like I never forget when No Scrubs came out. Shout out to Chili and T Boz, my mm-hmm. sisters. When No Scrubs came out, I was pushing wheelchairs in the airport, and I never forget. I got in the car, and. They was playing, I don't, and I was in the back seat of my boy car. And they was like, and then I was like, you hear this bullshit? Like and then you and they get to, and they get to, if you live at home with your mama, oh, oh yes, yes, sir, I'm, I'm talking, talking to you. you. <laughs> if you live right, and, like, and I'm like, the motherfuckers. <laughs> but I, that motivated me to get off my ass yeah. and do something. So now when I hear those scrubs, I enjoy it. I'm not a scrub. Yeah. If Sexy Red bothers you as a man, you're insecure. Mm. Now, if Sexy Red bothers you from the culture standpoint, the way Kenny Burns talks about it, I understand. Because, But my only thing is that, rep, what they say, representation has to include everyone. Yes. Mm-hmm. And you sometimes, it's like Tupac has a Tupac, 25, 30 years later, man been dead. He has a line that he said in an interview. He said, if America has a problem with me, they should have a problem with themselves because I'm everything America taught me to be. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and to Which me, is what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I feel like, I didn't hear, like, Young Nudie made a song. The hook to the song was, boop, 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 dick in your pussy. Yeah. Nobody said a fucking word. I didn't know that was a lie. That's, that's, that's the hook. Oh, I must only heard a clean version. No, you I hear it all the time, but I, did you know, Jen? Did you know that what he said? Okay. I thought he was saying, boop, 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 dick in your pussy. No, I, I ain't gonna lie, my favorite part is she like to rub and bump and boom. She like, that's the part I be going to. That's why the song is called Eggplants and Eggs, right? Okay. Nobody said anything. It was clever. The same song. It was clever. It was very clever. It was clever. Dick in your pussy? It wasn't. Dick in your pussy? I've heard the song a million times and I didn't know that. But I have. I heard, fuck my baby daddy, fuck, fuck my, my baby, baby daddy. She's I'm in jail. No, 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 She's no, no, no. in jail with no, no, no. black men behind her, dressed as prisoners saying, fuck. Oh. Let's compare apples to apples Let's and go. not at plants to peaches. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Same summer. He's saying, digging your pussy. The yep. video is a bunch of ratchet girls twerking, twerking at the park. Okay. Same summer. Sexy Red is in Miami looking for the hoochie, hoochie daddies. daddies that like to I get love ratchet. that shit. Her son need a new bag. She's trying to find a male role model for her son. Fun. And y'all are upset because <laughs> she said, but don't roll yeah. your eyes. Yes. Y'all are upset. Hey, 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 you fucking daddy. killed that shit. <laughs> I don't like how you did that. <laughs> She I don't know, know, but the Y'all same summer, daddy. she said her coochie pink, her booty hole brown, and every man was like, oh my God. I think what I've seen is you see videos of young girls under 10 
under 10 mm-hmm. is reciting the lyrics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what I think you see in a lot so of So there's no who, boys under 10 because, reciting No, no, no. Movie? What I'm saying is this. But we used to recite lyrics growing up, too. You talk about how impressionable all these young people are and what they're watching and what they're looking at. And when you see <laughs> that type of message, if I'm a parent, I don't have any children, but if I had a daughter that's seven years old and I came home and she's reciting those lyrics, I'm going to have an issue with that. And you're the problem, not Sexy Red. Oh. Hold on. I- you're the problem, not Sexy Red. I think I've, I've told you this story before. I'm 17 years old. I'm a square. Sitting at my daddy's house. I'm playing fucking solitaire on a computer. I'm listening to Life After Death. Okay. I'm listening to the 10-crack command. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I'm, want y'all to know that at go. that time, I had only been in this country seven years, right? Yeah. So my English is, it's Englishing, but you know. You go. My cultural references aren't there, yes. right? So now I recognize that when I listen to that song now, I recognize a whole bunch of shit in that yes. song that I did not understand. Sure. And that's like right? with Little Kim. Right? I'm 12 reciting Little Kim. Exactly. My father comes out as I'm listening to the song. He lets the song play out. It's like a minute and a half, two minute song. It's really an interlude, yeah. right? And my father says, you know, the kind of music that you listen to can impact the decisions that you make in your life. He gave me a whole fucking Shout lecture. Shout out to your dad. Let's clap hey, for our dad. That's real man shit. And I'm like, sir, I graduated high school at 16. I'm not about to go sell crack because a man said to me, rule nombre, rule name one. He don't even know he's using the wrong Spanish word. I'm not about to go sell crack because fucking Biggie said sell crack and here's, <laughs> here's how you do it, right? Okay. We had a push it dance contest at my eighth birthday party because yeah. salt and pepper was, that was the song. Yeah. So let's stop acting like Marvin Gaye doesn't have a song out there where the hook says, I'm gonna give you some heaven, but when you listen to it really fast, it sounds like I'm gonna give you some head, which is really what he meant yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yes. Right? I it's didn't know always that. been there. I like, didn't know that. I remember the day that I consciously understood what sexual healing was yeah. about, mm-hmm. and I was in the car with my right daddy, and now. I was like, I, you know, can I tell you, something? I had that same story. I'm in the car with my mother. I'm like 12 years old, maybe 11. And it was me and her friend and her, her cousin Toy. And they was playing Ozzy Brothers Between the Sheets. And the sound where he says, coming, coming on strong. I have Toy switched to my mom. They were some nasty niggas, weren't they? And I was like, what's nasty about coming on strong? What the fuck does that even mean? I didn't know. But we all know what well, fuck my baby and daddy mean. Fuck my baby. Well, sure, I, I, I but. Think, I, think it's the, I think it's the direct, the, the directiveness of it. It's the directness. Of it. okay, it's the directness sure. of it that kind of, and it's like, it's like they're what like, they were sexy. Little Kim was speaking sexy. Biggie was speaking sexy. But I think, and by the way, I'm a fan of sexy red music. I think I love what she represents because she is every girl in the hood. That's why what people have to understand, if you have a problem with sexy red, then you need to go back to your hood communities and repair mm-hmm. because it's a million of them in every hood. Listen, there's a Especially million the sexy South reds. South there's a million lottos. There's a million gorillas. There's a million, all of those girls right now that we are, that we celebrate Great, but my I think to answer the question about Sexy Red, I think it is her manner. Sexy Red is more on the side of Sukiana than she is Nicki Minaj. Okay, so let's so let's break that down right quick, right? You know what respectability politics are, right? No. Teach Don't me. be over here embarrassing us in front of these white folks. Yes. Uh-huh. So yeah. we're judging people by certain norms, right? So if Ooh, I like if she going. wasn't tatted up. If she wasn't this hood girl, mm. if she was light skinned and she was saying the same shit, That's would true. we feel the same way? No. Yes. yes. Would you? Because you just said she's not Nicki Minaj. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I wasn't talking about color. I was talking about presentation. No, no, no. I'm just saying, I mean, I'm but, saying, but, color, but I'm, color. Not saying, I'm saying Nicki is the forefront of what female rap is. We can all agree. She raps. Yeah. She writes she her shit. She opened the door for she, everybody. And by the way, she does it. And I think right after her, you have Doja Cat. But then I think Lotto and then you start dwindling down to those... Okay, she ratchet. I mean, I might. I, what I'm saying is that you might play Nikki record in the car with your white homegirl. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you get in the car with your white homegirl and y'all play sexy red. <laughs> well, I want. I want us to acknowledge that anything black that has like astronomical success is not succeeding just because of us, of right? Yeah. True. Real Housewives of Atlanta becoming the most popular one, that ain't just us watching, right? That's them. That's they they are fascinated by watching, us. Right. Yeah. So whether we're playing Sexy Red for these white folks or not, they're listening. They're listening but what I'm saying... Sure. But, but no, no. But, but I don't want you to get... But we don't see white kids. But we don't see We don't see white little girls singing it. We don't know. No, that, we and that, and that goes that's back to that. That goes back to Good that point. same question Good you were having about white men, right? Like a lot of times we'll think that something is only happening in the black culture, but but then it's white girls making the same kind of memes on Instagram about um, about podcasts, like how we do about the dudes yeah. that followed yeah. um, Oh Boy, right? Yeah. Like 
we don't know what the white kids are doing. We, and actually, there is a video of these two <laughs> little white girls at a restaurant somewhere dancing, dancing yeah. to, if it wasn't Sexy Red, yeah. it was, it was like that, yeah. um, Meg. Yeah. But when I say respectability, I, I don't want us to get stuck on the color, right? Gotcha. Like, it was just a, it was just a got, question I, I was asking, sure. right? But it's just, it's the idea of... There's certain people in your family that you might not bring around certain other people in your family. Right. Of course. Right. Right. Of course. And that's what she is. And my thing is this. It's Ta. But imagine, <laughs> here's the funny part, <laughs> to the white people that work with black folks that are from the hood, you don't know how much we had to change to end up where we ended up. But this is my thing. Fuck right. that. We don't have to change no more. We don't have to right. change no more. And by the way, that's why I said, I understand where people are coming from, but I still like it because it's authentic. Now, I would have a problem if it wasn't. Like, if Sexy Red got in the car after saying, get him sexy, and then got in the car, I was like, so how much money did we make? I really them? feel like that's what's actually happening. I'll be a yeah. thousand percent honest I don't with think you. So. Oh, yeah. my God. I don't think so. I will be a thousand percent uh, with you. I, she so may like, not get in the car and, like, put on her glasses and be like, let me check the stock market real quick. But I really think that she knows Sexy she Red is an exaggeration of who she actually is in real life. Yeah. Ooh, can I tell you how much I love you? Can I tell you why? Because that is what every superstar is. Yeah, That's it. They have to play every their role. Every superstar is an exaggeration of the character. character. DMX was, we know all who a DMX in the hood was, but the uh, uh, that was exaggerating the character. Yeah. That was making the character entertaining. And for me, as long as she's entertaining, I have no problem with it. As long as that black woman is getting her money, I have no problem with it mm -hmm. because my job, now I will tell y'all this. I remember about two years ago in my house, we was having a party and WAP came on. And you know, this is y'all know at parties with kids, you know, men don't really be involved. Like men be over in the corner. Yeah. You know, we might, you know, daddies don't be dancing with the kids. Like that's a female thing, I get it. Mm -hmm. So I'm in my bedroom and I hear wet ass pussy. Certified freak, nigga. It was like 50 <laughs> people in the house. I walk out my room, hey, turn that shit off. With my kids will not be dancing to that. And that's it. And yeah. that's what that's, that's why daddies are needed in the house. Well, that's not just daddies, yeah. but like I'm, yes, nah, daddies that's true. for Cause, sure. Because I think because I think as women, I think sometimes I just want to say this. I think sometimes women don't take the shit as serious as men do because maybe because Ty, you might not be a hoe. But I've interacted with some hoes and I've interacted with some good girls. And I will tell you this. They have different stories, both sides. Usually the good girls have a great relationship with their man, a man in their life or their father. Usually yeah. the hoes don't understand. That's why when they meet you immediately, they call you daddy well, on day two. Daddy issues. Shit. I don't, know that, I don't know if I want the daddy duties yet, baby. Mm -hmm. Can we got there wait to get there? That's true. So for me, I feel like they're, they're, by the way, I think that that's why these forums are good. I think we should do some live because I think that we as black people want to know how to work with each other, interact with each other, and there are no rules. Right. And we can start defining that properly. So What's good, everybody? This is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And if you were wondering who this beautiful woman sitting next to me is, is my sister Tiffany Daniels Sai. Let's give it up for my sister. Everybody get clap. <laughs> this is good. And my sister is, she's the most talented person in the family. And we started a family business, a signature scent company. So if you like smoke a lot of weed in your car and you want to get the scent out, you have to check out these scents. I know guys that use it for the weed. I know people that use it for cologne and everywhere they go to get compliments. We make candles, we make room sprays, we got them in kits. So if you want to buy something for your loved one or anybody, you know, that you care about, hit us up, LorraineCo.com. And we're going to put the website at the bottom of it. Uh, but support this black business, support this black woman and order. I promise you guys. And matter of fact, use the word gods and we'll give you 15% off. I just made that up. So if my sister <laughs> face looks crazy, don't get mad at her. I'll eat that. But Guys, when I tell you this shit is incredible, you really should check this out. The best sense ever. LaRayCo.com. And we'll put it at the bottom of the screen. Thank you. Thanks. I'll say this real quick just to Go wrap ahead. that up, right? Because <laughs> I, know, I know we don't want to stay on there for too long. But I think that there is... Okay, so... Coming out of... Uh, coming out of slavery into segregation, whatever, whatever, what have you, right? We've talked about how, like, a lot of people behaved in such a way that, like, there was only room for one of us in the room, right? Yes. So when the other black person came in, you had a hate on them, or whatever, yes. whatever. Yeah. Like, I think that this generation is the first to liberate itself from some of the shit that we were taught to Agreed. do. 
Yeah. For white people, right? Agreed. The idea we're, that if your hair is curly, if your hair is curly, if your hair is not straight, that there's a problem with it. Yeah. The idea that you have to pronounce words a certain way. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, every person in England, in Australia, in South Africa, in every country where they speak English, everybody speaks it a little different, right? For sure. So what's the diff what's wrong with, with cats from South Side talking the way that the cats from the South Side sound? Right. I totally agree. If the people in Ireland sound the way that they do, right? I totally and agree. really, the people in Ireland sound just like, like the people in Jamaica. But you know what I'm saying? Oh, like I love that all of those things and so I think that she's a continuation of that now if it offends you if it bothers you I tell people all the time I cheer for Sexy Red by principle the more y'all hate on her the more, the more I like her me, but exactly. I could not sing a single Sexy Red song from beginning to end I'm old brother you're not that she, old no I could be her mama no, no, you yes. can't. Sexy Red is what, 25? Yes. 25? I could be her mother. Oh, shit. Ray, I was 1,000% fucking 25 years ago. I was Both too. Both my parents are dead, I can say that. <laughs> I, I was too. But, but I was for using, sure. I, was, I, I, I wasn't making I babies. I was, I was fucking for fun. I wasn't fucking. I'll call fun. him, he'll confirm. Yeah. But my point being. <laughs> <laughs> My point being that I don't have to, like, my nephew, when my nephew was little. Yeah. And to this day, it was a playlist on my phone of the songs that did not have curse words. When he was in the car with me, I listened to different music than what I listened to when he was in, in the car, right? Yeah. Now he's 18, like now like, or even like when he was 14, one time I was like, you know what? I'm gonna pick an album, you pick an album, we're gonna listen to it together, right? I wanna hear what you're listening to. Mm. I put on Jay-Z, girl, girl, girls, girls, girls come on and I'm like, oh my God. What the fuck am I doing? That is the most sexist, it's, misogynistic. Yeah. It's so bad. It's so bad. It's, so bad. it's one of my favorite songs. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah, but, so, but, 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 but you know what I'm saying? But like, I wasn't thinking about it, right? And I'm like, so at that moment, there's an opportunity to turn it off. There's an opportunity to turn it off and have a conversation. But you know what it is, though? The reality is, is that what we, what you just told me that I'm, I'm and I'm going to the next subject, what you just told me that I'm compelled to say is that parents because i only know old school music because when i was in the car my mom they curated the music mm -hmm. parents need to curate what mm -hmm. their kids listen to around them mm -hmm. um the minute that i knew little raymond like i follow him on instagram he posts some ignorant shit i mean it could be the, it could be some just ignorant atlanta shit i'll tell i'm following him why would you post that son i thought it was funny do you realize that you're telling the world that that would and that's what entertains you mm. Damn, I didn't think about it like that, Dad. Yeah, think about what you post now. Yeah. Establish yourself first and then start doing yeah, it. Yeah. But speaking of sexy red and speaking of women subjects, let's okay. go. Okay. Speaking of female subjects, Lotto, mm -hmm. Big Lotto, Southside Lotto, big is headlining Southside. birthday bash. The first woman to ever. Let's, la let's clap let's for, clap for Lotto. The first woman I to ever. I want to tell you why I didn't clap. Tell me. Oh, shit. Not, not, not let's for Lotto. Let's go. Let's go. Let, him, let the clip go. Let's Let me go. tell you why I'm mad. Let me tell Let's you why I'm mad. Ass, I'm, I'm not mad at all. I'm very, very proud of Lotto. I love Lotto. Um, I think Lotto, in, if all these girls are Nikki's sons and they would be idiots to say that they're not, I think Lotto is a more direct line off the branch. I think Lotto could wrap her ass off. I think that people ignore how she, her accent and don't really pay attention to what she be saying. I think that she's put out a few songs recently where she's like, no, I really want y'all to understand Damn. that I know how to rap. Yeah. I didn't clap because it is to the year of our Lord in Wakanda 2024. And she's the first woman to headline birthday yes, bash. The first woman. The That's only, why I didn't clap. Okay, so the only woman that was qualified to headline a birthday so not Meg was Nikki, uh -huh. Cardi, uh -huh. Meg. Meg uh -huh. But where is birthday bash? In Atlanta. Atlanta. Where's Lotto from? Atlanta. Atlanta. That's why it's happening. Where does happening. Nikki live? I mean, not Nikki. Where, where does Cardi live? In LA. LA now. Uh, okay, come she, on she has, she has a house here. But my point is, is that, if it, my point is, is that Summer Jam, if they had their first woman perform, it would probably be Cardi. from New York. Yeah. Okay. Atlanta just, we just needed our first female superstar. That's probably. Shouts to the brat, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Brat was the first one. But we need our first female superstar. And to me, I just think that it's symbolic. But what I really talk about is, is that birthday bash is three months from now. Okay. That's, what does that tell you guys? What, you ready? What does that tell you? Go ahead. What does it tell you that they birthday bash get, is three they, months from now? They got to get three months of extra promotion and early just Boom. to get some people in the room. Boom, now mm. let me tell you why I was oh, going there. have they not ever announced it this early? No. Not this early. But you know why they got to do this early? Because they got to compete with 
Rolling Loud. Yeah. Yep. They got to compete with One Music Fest. Yep. So now the world has opened up and now what Birthday Bash was the one compilation concert a year mm. and Summer Jam was, now you got to promote this shit like a concert. concert. Yeah. So notice it wasn't just Lotto. It was Lotto with friends. friends. Yeah. The friends is another way of saying there's other names on the list that know. Lotto is the big name but there'll be other names there. So for me, that's the shocking part. It's like, fuck, radio has to alter their rollouts because there was a point in time where all you had to do was say birthday bash is next week yeah we didn't even care what was performing no, so we, was going, we was going right. but now it's like hold on what birthday bash huh yeah and and what and and we spoke about this earlier and we might as well talk about it a lot of artists are canceling show dates because they can't sell tickets right the fans are now trained the fa that's why i said festivals have killed yes they have. the yeah. star the fans are now trained to say, if I'm going to spend $300 on a ticket, I want more than just you. Right. I want all of y'all. Yeah. But see, so uh, to that regard, I say this, right? I think the festival experience is a very particular experience. And it's Agreed. not for everybody. Agreed. Right? Not for me. Like, it's a lot of times where, like, it might not be for you because it's too many people. It's, it might not be for you because you don't want to do all that walking. It's a lot of <laughs> times. Like, like, no, it's not for me. Because yeah. I've realized that. And, and and maybe I'm just the maybe I'm just a fan, but I realized that all the names that's names spread against four different stages, right? And they're all performing at the same time, right. So it's not like you can just see Future and then see Kanye. Future's going on at nine ten on one stage, and Kanye's going on at nine thirty yeah. on another stage, and Kanye is a thirty minute fucking walk from the Future thing. So you start realizing, damn, I'm not really getting mm -hmm. everything they advertise. I'm getting whatever is around me, and to me, that's what makes it to me even harder because you're right. The, the festival experience is for youth. It is for kids. I, I'm not even saying it's Go for ahead. youth or for kids. I'm just saying it's not for everybody. Got you right. For sure. That's the reason why it's not for you. For somebody else, it might be like, for me, I looked at a, it was a video last year of Playboy Cardi set at Rolling Loud in California, and I remember watching it, and in my heart, I was like, oh my God, I'm never going to a festival again unless I'm working, right? Because I just, it felt like kid shit that I don't yeah. want to do. Listen, right? not, not, not only that, you don't even, for this, let's also talk about. You got to stand up. You don't know, the closer you are. The more you getting dirty in the mosh pit, pump yeah, jumping yeah. up. So hold on, yeah. let's also talk about. So now you know. Seat. Look, I, my sneakers cost two thousand dollars. <laughs> I'm no, I'm not walking. I'm not walking in the with dirt that, right? across. And then you start realizing. So now you got to sit here. I was at Rolling Loud Miami. I was at least four hundred yards from the stage. I didn't even care what was happening on the stage. Exactly. Because I, because it was like, it was too far for me. And then you start realizing the festival is no longer for you, the artist. The festival is for you to be able to say you were there. So they're selling or, every part of the experience. Or experience. it's one music fest, which feels like our little family. Like if you didn't go yeah, to a, a HBCU, one music fest feels like a like yes, homecoming, does, right? Like does. a lot of your friends are coming. It does feel like stop the yard ish. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so that's good. All Shout out to, to say Jay. Shout that out we to can't Jay. say that the festival killed the concert because the person that wants to go and sit and say, okay, I paid for a future. I know there's gonna be a DJ, you be organized, something nigga I don't care about, and future. I know that the sit Burner Boy had a show. You gotta have a whole itinerary, right? Burner Boy <laughs> had a show in Atlanta, and me and my whole girl showed up early. They said the doors is at eight, eight, nine. We was like, all right, eight, nine. Nine. We went. No, 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 this wasn't this year. This was last. He ain't going to like 11. Oh, yeah, this is like last 11. year. So we yeah. get there, right? We have nosebleeds. And we see a bunch of open seats down there. So we're like, all right, we're, we're going to go down yeah. and see what happens. <laughs> well, because he's African. They start late. I, a Haitian, understood. <laughs> I'm African. He wasn't, getting I understood. On, he wasn't getting on that stage. That party until went on right. That was a real African the party. Africans <laughs> also understood that Burner Boy was not going to walk yes. into the building until and 935. Exactly. Okay? <laughs> and the party, was <laughs> the party was not going to end until 2 in the morning. It's 2 in the morning. Okay? And when I tell you, we like, walked out. it was like they rang a bell and everybody came in at the same time and he literally hit the stage like 15 minutes later. Right? Oh, wow. So my point being, like, if you're the person, that wants to go see your one artist or you might want to see two people two three people right mm -hmm. or you're the the um the affordable home old school yeah. crowd right you're gonna pay 50 yep. bucks you're gonna see all them niggas that everybody you love. that you go it's up. gonna be the one time that you go out for the quarter yes. with your yes. wife yes you and her best friend or his husband yeah, gonna make a whole yes. thing yep. Yep. i think that there's different sets for everybody but what we can't ignore is outside of that last group that i just said 
tickets are fucking ridiculous. Bro, yes, they are. Bro, Who can are. afford to go to a concert? But that's my point. What, what really is happening is that people, everybody should not headline tours. Agreed. Okay. And, and dog, J-Lo had to cancel more than half of her dates. I've seen that. And you got, you got, I mean, Meg just announced the arena tour. The real tour should be Meg and Nikki. Yeah, it's her and it's her and um, um, she's Monica. bringing out Glorilla with her and, and Monica. Oh. No, 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 Meg, no, Meg is bringing, is bringing out, out Glorilla. Glorilla. That's my point. I don't know if Meg and Gorilla can fill in the room. Are, no, are enough for ten thousand people to pay. Three hundred dollars a ticket. ticket. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So why does the ticket have to be three hundred dollars? Because you everybody's everybody greedy. Everybody, everybody's everybody's greedy. greedy. And it's greed. And I'm telling you, what's going to happen is what's happening now. They're turning the audience off, mm -hmm. and they're showing how turned off they are by not buying your ticket. So is the result that next year these prices start to go back down? I think. I think. I think. I think that we got to go through another year or so. Mm. Because remember, we had about five years of no artists selling out arenas. Mm -hmm. Like, we talking about like 17, 18. It was the pandemic when this yeah. influx of money came in and people were being outside. Well, now, I do think experiences are important. But like, dog, Hannah got fucking set, uh, American Sesh coming. Her lineup, I ain't lying to you. That lineup, that was birthday bash. I'll go do that. Yeah. She got T.I., A-Ball, and MJG. Like, I'm like, what? Oh, I'm my God, you're so old, sir. No, no, it's not. It's, but, but can I be honest with you? I, 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 I'd rather, if we're speaking for me as a fan. Yeah. I, I do have the number one song in the country. I'm, I'm young. I'm young on that world. But I'm saying, <laughs> me as a fan? I want to see that. Yeah. So, my thing is, is that I think that, I think that there are a lot of artists in the ecosystem. Spotify just released a, um, a statement where they said they paid over... 1,257, they paid 1,257 artists a million dollars. So that means out of a million artists, only 1,257 made seven figures. Mm -hmm. um, the point is, is that it's all got to be consolidated. It's too much. It's too much. I think that, I think that we're going to have to get back to giving the fans a chance to pick and choose how they want to. But I think that these artists, I understand, and, and the reality is, I'm being honest with you, the reality is, is it's all ego. Mm -hmm. because Meg, instead of doing State Farm Arena, can come do Fox Theater or do a Lakewood mm -hmm. and just get and yeah. get have a more packed experience mm -hmm. yeah. rather than stretching herself out to Trying do to to an arena. Arena, an arena with, with Glorilla who arena. has three songs. So we're not paying to see her. Mm -mm. Like, now, I will Meg. say this, though. I'll say this. Meg... We're ignoring that there's a lot of that. The people that came down to see Taylor Swift that packed out Taylor Swift for three days. It's a lot of people in the Atlanta metro that are going to come to State Farm for Meg that wouldn't necessarily come for some of these other artists. That's true. Right? Because Meg The Stallion is, you know, she's a girl. She's, she's got she's, pop songs. Yeah. She's got a lot of pop yeah. features. She's, you know, like they like she's the the chosen black girl. black girl for right now right like she's like the next nikki to them right yeah um would you look at um what's his name what's the little boy name oh my god that sounds so old somebody just sold out center stage and it was his first show who was baby it baby drill baby drill right you do a center stage you sell out center stage you can do that i think that the other thing that we have to kind of consider too is you and i both work in the music business yep I try to do it now because I have interns, so I have them around me. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people our age making decisions for people 20 years younger than us yeah. that have yeah. no idea what those kids actually want. Uh, yeah. By the way, I agree. And to me, that's a huge problem. I don't have that problem because I like youth around me. I work for LA. No, I work for LA Reed. That's the one thing LA taught us. Like, you need youth around you yeah. because you're not going to know it all. And you're right. I am. Dog, it's usually the people that we're fans of is usually from the ages of 14 to around 25. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After 25, if I become a fan of you, it's usually, it's usually like different. Like, I'm a fan of Drake, but I'm a whole fan. Yeah. I'm a yay fan. They came between that age. Drake came when I was like 27, 28. Yeah. It's different. I like the, I like him. He's dope. But it's a different attachment. It's a different yes. attachment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't we don't also and I think that that's another thing that we're not doing. So I give you an example, not to go off, but on some music shit. That's it's a song going viral right now. Can I call you Rose? Mm -hmm. Everybody thinks that that record is from the 60s or 70s. That record came out in 2023. The mm. point, yeah. The point is, is that. 
the the music business is being lazy because they instead of figuring out how to give the fan base a variety of things they say, they say whatever they want give it to them whatever's working give it to them and then when that don't work they drop everybody and say what they want now and it's like bro mm -hmm. we silk sonic dropping lets you know that we wanted that feel of music yeah like we want r b yeah. we want fucking soul music we want it but we can't get it because the people at the top are like what's what can what we get want, the money yeah. from right it's that simple so with that being said, we just we just got to get some we got to think differently about how to approach it and we got to and by the way, we got to stop talking old nigga young nigga shit. Because when we was kids doing hip hop, our parents wasn't calling us young no. and we damn sure weren't calling but them old. But you know old. why? They'll because beat our we ass. weren't trying to uh, we weren't trying to occupy the same space. But then, yeah. you know, it, I've when, had this conversation a lot, right? Like I've always said that well not always, but I've, I've been having this conversation for almost 15 20 years. Um hip hop is the only youth culture movement that hasn't at some point branched off and left room for somebody else, right? Agreed. So we're the parent, I feel like we had this conversation before, but the parent who listens to Rolling Stone considers that rock, their kid is not listening to Rolling Stone, but they're also considering that rock. They understand they're not in the same space. Yeah. Dad may grab his son and take him to a Stones show. Son may grab his dad because his dad happens to be, yeah. a, I don't even know who yeah. a rock band is right now, but you, sure. you get what I'm saying, for right? Sure. Mm -hmm. Like hip hop is the first time where our generation or the generation before us yep. refuses to move out the way. Mm. And we want to prove that we still, you know what I'm saying? Like ooh, we're still cool. Ooh, ooh, we're still you, relevant. You, but you know what's so crazy? I think because that is the mentality of hip hop. That is what hip hop, that is the rules that hip hop is built on. Which is what? It's cool. But cool. here's the thing: you could be the cool, the cool OG. I am a cool OG. Yeah, you are. That's my right. point. Well, that's what I'm saying. But but my point is is that. But the problem is not the cool OGs. The problem is the young people saying y'all old niggas need to shut the fuck up. But, yeah. those, young people, but young those young people that are telling old people to shut the fuck up are doing it as a reaction to the old people saying these kids young ain't saying nothing. Know. Meanwhile, y'all was outside talking about some rickety rocket was okay, my favorite okay, card okay, too. Oh, okay, so I would say so. I love that. <laughs> After marriage, the honey oh, move. I'll be damned to be with oh, a you spoon. Always, you always point out the song, um, the um, uh, the which who sang song is it? Where he's like, I I bomb. I bomb atomically. So, right, so I, yeah. right, like nobody knows what you're saying, sir. Like, we did at that time, we knew exactly what he was no, saying. No, we did not. No, 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 no. <laughs> nigga, we don't know what that means. I, I, I didn't know what that means. What the fuck does that mean? Come on, man. Nigga, listen. How I, how I be rocking these wallabies? Like, no. No, okay? nigga. No. good. But here's the point. But the point is this the point is this is that. I think that the youth have nothing to hold on to besides their money. That's why they talk about it. By the way, I do think that OG should be better. Don't forget Gilbert Arenas. Let's talk about that. Gilbert Arenas and Squaggy P were making fun of or trying to insinuate that Drea was in the backseat giving them, like, if you knew what she was doing in the backseat, you would have had a kid with her. So fucking what, what? my nigga? Yeah. Like, the OGs got to act like fucking men, too. Go. Yeah, and guess yes. what? Guess what? By the way, ladies, let me teach y'all something. Ooh, I'm going to give y'all some information y'all don't know. Y'all cause a lot of the problems. Oh, let, oh Lord, here we go. I'm going to tell y'all why. Because okay. we got a pussy. No, nope, that's, that's not why. <laughs> I stopped that shit, James. I got this. Y'all keep fucking telling me, like, nigga, I got this. Let me tell you why. Because that may, I forgot my train of thought now. That's why I hate it. Women. We, oh, no. Here's why, it's, here's why women cause problems. Because nothing makes a young nigga feel like he's on the same level as an older nigga than when he fucked the same bitch as you. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> oh, that makes hold sense. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let me finish. You ain't so, that wrong. Now, let's be clear. So, say, so, you can be, so you can have been the girl that, so let's say it's a guy, a girl that messed with I'm puff before all the bullshit. Mm, pick somebody else. I, I, I can't think of nobody. Pick the next one. Do, everything else. Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. No, pick a next one. See what I'm trying to say? <laughs> pick a next one. Jay Z is Beyonce. Jeezy. Jeezy. That's what I want to use. Jeezy. Go with Jeezy. 50 Cent. There we go. 50, 50, 50 Cent. Thank you so much. Queens nigga going to put a Queens nigga in the mix, boy. We're going to make sure they put a New York Queens. <laughs> no, but here's my point 50 Cent messes with a girl, and then he, he wipes her up, does stuff for her. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden he stopped fucking with her and she stopped fucking with a young rap nigga. 
Mm. Ladies, regardless of what you believe, that young rap nigga now thinks he's on 50 Cent's right. level, yeah. level mm-hmm. because he's fucked you. So my point, is, my, point is, my point is that the point the of the moral story, of the story is if you're going to fuck a rapper, pick one and never fuck another rapper. Or, or, or. Rapper specifically. Or, or, or yeah. treat your vagina like a brand. And do not allow niggas that are not uh, that are not on line with brand to run up in you, That's because right. because if you treat your vagina That's like a word. brand and you say to yourself, "I just finished dating Fifty Cent," I'm not about to go date some little young nigga the heart in the hood. The heart no, 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 no. The heart wants the money, and that's why you went from a well, forty. Well, that's why you went from a forty-year-old successful nigga to him. a twenty-year-old successful nigga. That's why Dre <laughs> went from Gilbert Arenas when he was an all-star uh-uh. to now Jalen, why he's an all-star. Well, but my thing is this: if Dre looks good enough, and them ovaries are in shape. Who gives yeah. a fuck? No, no, no. All right, let me no, say no, something. No, no, Can no, I no. say something? Please, Who cares? Because I have this problem all the time. Go ahead. So I'm 38, right? And my homeboys, they be like, oh, you a cougar. You this, you that. They call me a cougar. But I'm like, how can you sit here and call me a cougar when the young niggas be trying to fuck with me and you be trying to fuck with the young girls? What's the difference? It's right. Y'all this want is, young girls. But my point is this. And the young boys want us older But my women. point is this. Is that Period. I never had a problem with an artist. I had one artist. Shout out to my little nigga. We tight now. <laughs> You know who I'm talking about. Oh, he fucked the girl I fucked. And let me tell you the problem is. Now, <laughs> let me tell you the problem is. Let me tell you the problem I was wondering what happened to him. Now he's laying up with her and she's talking about me to yeah, him. Of course. So now That's he so thinks he's on my level. So now he's looking at me like, instead of looking up to me, he's looking at me like, yeah, nigga. Yeah. I just fucked something you fucked. But you don't <laughs> understand, bro. That was, uh, by the way, as grown up men, let me say this. <laughs> We got to say this already know. Us as grown men got to be a little careful too. We got to fuck on brand. Yeah. Because fuck on brand. we got to fuck on brand. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs to fuck on brand. Please make that shirt. I know I need that shirt. Fuck on brand. No. Fuck on brand. Y'all fuck on brand. I want that shirt. I will wear that shirt. Fuck, listen. I will wear that Y'all shirt. Y'all don't say fuck on brand and go fuck some other shit. No. no the shirt you, says brand. But let me tell you, let me tell you like. I don't believe men were gonna do that. No, I think that I think I that there's think a lot of men. Strong enough to do that. I think that there's a lot of men that you Jesus never Christ. hear no. anything about, and there's a reason. It's because they fuck they with fuck brand. Brand. Or, they, or they got that's NDAs. That's everything. They that's fuck everything. Brand. You just made me understand it so much because, like, you and I have had a conversation. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a uh, reason. That's the same reason why y'all think that I'm such an angel is because I fuck on brand. I'm exactly. <laughs> and by the way, oh, so by the way, on. if everybody fucked on brand, the world would be better because yes. everybody would be saying, "Man, I'm a polo nigga. That bitch is a Gucci bitch. I got to get to that Gucci level." Or she's just a low key. Or you undercover? Which one is it? Huh? Or you undercover? Oh, she undercover like undercover. a motherfucker. Freak. No, I fuck on brand, and my brand is who needs to Not know my you, business. But that you fuck- <laughs> That's my brand. My brand <laughs> is. But I'm saying. Ty? By the way, couldn't be. I only you. By the way, can I tell y'all something? Oh my god, I, I'm not. I can't believe I'm saying this. I saw this. Like I this. saw this firsthand. I saw this firsthand. <laughs> I never forget. It's somebody I work with. I'm not gonna say his name because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And we would. He, we, he was. We was signed to this guy, and. He wound up fucking one of his chicks. And I feel like at that moment, he was like, that nigga ain't shit, I fucked this bitch. And it's yeah. like, nah, baby girl, ladies, your pussy is a gift to men when we work hard. Stop <laughs> giving it to niggas that worked hard that day, <laughs> that day and that got enough money to take you out to dinner that day. Stick with your brand. Stick with your brand. Wait right. till you get there because men respect it more. Yeah. That's and true. then these little niggas don't understand I might have just smashed you and kept it moving, baby. You, you, you know what I'm trying to say? So we might, me and you doing, nigga, I'm just on the yellow brick road a little earlier than you. Hold on, real quick. <laughs> I just ran quick. into a little early, ran on the yellow quick. brick road and kept walking. And then you, following behind me, ran into her, fucked her too. Now we fucked her, but nigga, I'm still eight miles ahead of you. But, yeah. real, but real quick. <laughs> you, like, uh, playing devil's advocate. Okay. Please. I fucked the Gucci nigga and I fucked the polo nigga. For sure. In what order? That and matters. Then I, and then I dropped them and both. And then, then I dropped, the and then I dropped matter. Matter. them both off at it's Goodwill good. and I go on with my Period. fucking life. If that polo oh, shirt that and that Gucci hold shirt on, hold on. is sitting on the same shelf. That was dope. That was dope. That's dope. That was dope. That was dope. The that's dope. Same that's customer customer next, that's not my business. But here's the only difference. That's not my business. Here's the only difference. Don't get caught wearing a shirt in the picture. 
That's it. Yeah. Again. They're going to be like, Todd sent her shit to Goodwill. <laughs> they gonna, I'm telling you. You got, listen. They would never. We got, that's why, that's why I think what, that's why I think what I'm, Gilbert and Swaggy did. That was lame. Ray. He's, it's his turn. As long yeah. as you've known me, has anybody ever come to you and said anything to you about me? Hell no. Other than me? Only you say, Ray, I think you're cute. I've never, you, you are the, you are the sneaky link <laughs> I've told you more than that. Way more. Has but, anybody uh, ever come to you and said anything to you about me? No. There you go. <laughs> you fucking on brand. Fucking By the way, let's brand. get up for top of fucking on brand. Yeah. 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 Ladies. And, and, and let me give my disclaimer. <laughs> Baby girl, I mean, fellas, ladies, whatever. <laughs> Let's please understand that my real first name and my last name is 19 letters, two hyphens. It's not even in English. That's why we don't even talk about it. And most of y'all don't even know it. Yep. I speak four languages. My daddy was a diplomat. I'm very, very intelligent. My brand is not for everybody. Yes. So I don't want us to think. Pop your shit. I don't want us to think that my brand, but I will tell you who. That sometimes you got to rent the runway and send it back. I'm and I'm about to say, and sometimes ladies, you got to be at Old Navy. And, and ladies, you start determining. When you start saying you dealt with a man, if you're going to pillow talk, ladies and fellas, we need to distinct between I leased, I rented, or I owned. That's really what it is. Because let's be Cause, clear. Because that's the other part of fucking on brand. Fucking on brand, brand also means are you buying or are you leasing? Right. Thank is you. It use or is it user? Let's, let's, let's be clear. Or is I, it I, I got, I got, is it I got all four cars, but when I rent one, I don't mind talking to Toyota Camry for the day. It's too far. Days. What's the difference? Yeah, I'm gonna, I'll true. go back to my bears you tomorrow. I'm going to fuck on brand and I'm going to stay to my brand and we need more of that because the <laughs> ecosystem is all fucked up. That's why you got old niggas hating on the 22 year old kid. I, I just why would to be clear. old niggas hate on a 22 year old kid? Let me right. tell you something. But at the same time, because he, fucked, on, he us, fucked your brand. I don't want us to, I don't want us to act like there's not something questionable about having a child with somebody that's the same age as your child, whether you're male or female. And I know that we can point to, you know, and, and again, and there's, there's layers to it, right? So like the difference between 10 and 20 is different than the difference between 20 and 30. And it's way different and than the difference between 10 and 20. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like if I go and I, if I'm 44 and I go and I date a 54 year old man, nobody's Nothing. thinking anything of it. Yeah, right. No. But at 24, you, you pulling up on a 14 year old, that no. shit looks weird as fuck. Exactly. Right. So, Mick Jagger has a kid with somebody that might be the same age as one of his kids. That's way different than you having a child by somebody that you could still claim on your taxes if they were at school. That could still now, be now, on your insurance. Now I want to say this. Love that, is love, now though. I want to say this. That's true. I but think, you shouldn't be around that twenty one year old that I, I, long. I, that that's true. But let let's be clear. Mm -hmm. See, that's another thing we're gonna talk about. Drea is famous. Mm -hmm. So this kid probably was fourteen years old. Mm -hmm. Dreaming of being with her, yeah. mm -hmm. and he got a chance. Oh no! I'm no not one's gonna about pass that up. Now here's a, no one's gonna pass mm -hmm. that up. No one is. But I'm then not he probably feel like, in him. But he felt like he probably felt like she was cool, and was like, "Damn!" Because let's be clear, just He's because I had a kid, wrong one just because here. I had a kid with someone doesn't mean that I want to marry them. That just he's, might mean that we, I think you're wrong cool. one yeah. here. What I'm she saying is. is, if if one of Donovan's friends, if one of my nephew's friends was like, yo, how old is Donovan now? He's 18. Wow. I've been knowing he's a baby. He was like three coming around he's crying six, for you. Four. Wow. Okay. He's six, four. Okay. Let me, let me use a different example. My best friend's daughter goes to Clark Atlanta. I'm, she's, I, she's like one of the best humans that I know. She graduates this year. She's amazing. I'm only not shouting her out because I didn't ask her if I could do that, but she's one of my favorite people on earth. If one of her classmates was like, yo, your auntie is bad. I'd be like, baby, I could, I'm old enough to be your mother. And right. I keep, Keep walking. Now, now, okay, now let's say. Now, 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 let's have rich, this. No, though. I got this. <laughs> Woo! Stay there. Let's stay here. Okay. Ta, we in the imaginary world. Okay. That friend, you say, baby boy, I am old enough to be your mom. Keep it moving. You walk away. You get 20 feet. He right behind you, like, sweetheart, I'm a man. I don't, grown is grown. Like, I got my own money. I got my own this. I just want to take you on a date. If you too immature, to have maturity to go on a date with someone younger than you just say that. That's okay, baby, because that peer pressure worked on me when I was 22. It's not going to work on me. I've got to prove to you that I'm grown, nigga. My bills, my dog's bills Let's go prove eat that I'm grown. Can we just go eat? I just want to take fine. your, food I just want to feed you. That's their food I just want to feed you. I'm good. Okay. Thank you so much. Because it's inappropriate to me in my book by my guidelines. You understand know what I'm saying? I get that. There's a whole bunch of other niggas in that, on that same basketball team that that young man is on. She should be dating the coach. Mm. Ooh, the coach. Oh, I hate you. You're so right. 
Real talk. But and we can and look and look and look. So we'll say we'll say now this is the one thing, right? We always talk about we you. always talk about like the body counts of women and celebrity yep. women specifically, right? And the one thing that we don't think about is everybody dates by proximity, right? Mm -hmm. So like nurses are scheming on doctors. There are women. Flight attendants are scheming on pilots. Are, are scheming on pilots. Yeah, of there are women that hang out at bars on Wall Street because they know what they're trying. Every yep. man, I've told you this before. Every man, there are groupies for every kind of man. There are women in the hood that all they want is a nigga with a fucking city job. A because nine to that five. shit uh -huh. comes with a pension. Yep. What, baby? I'm going to hold you down. Yep. What, you in the military? Let's right. go. Oh, we got great I'm benefits. here for the next 18, how many years? 18? Let's 18 go. years. I'm in there, right? Every level that you are as a man there's somebody that's interested in that and everybody's dating by proximity right so we can say Dre is a celebrity this young man I don't even know his celebrity, name Jay. celebrity celebrity yeah okay but there's other people in that room that they're in you and I work in the music business there are people 10 years older than us 10 years younger than us yep. mm -hmm. right there's an option there's a choice that you can make it's gonna be an intern that's gonna come in man do you know how many artists I've come across I don't even watch basketball no more because I'm like, shit, like, I think about how old you are I in the draft. Like, that's not even sexy to me no so, more. Like, I had to, rem it's a football player, it's an African football player who's gone viral recently because, like, every game he that he goes to, he dresses in, yeah. like, traditional, oh, my, that nigga's fine as fuck. That nigga's 25 years old. And if and that nigga pushed up pretty, and said, Todd, I want to take you to dinner. But that, I would ask for his uncle Lizzo. I know you have an uncle. But he, uh, that's cool. I introduced my uncle. I introduced to my but uncle. But I'm just saying, like, dinner. no, no, no. Me, per <laughs> me I take personally. You to I just want to take you to dinner. I think you're smart. I want to sit down with you. I want to take you to dinner. Me personally. Me personally. I want to say my mom brand. I want to say my brand light up. Me personally. The first person to introduce me to designer was my daddy. My homeboys are six figure niggas. Yep. I cook. And I listen, I can make ramen noodles feel like a gourm or gourmet meal. You're mm. not, I'm not gonna fold for any, there's nothing that you can do. To me, there's a barometer. To me, there are certain rules, there are certain yeah. things that are in place, right? And so there's, I'm not gonna fold. I don't care what he comes up with. You know what you sound like? Who do I sound you like? You sound like those Korean women. <laughs> yeah, you sound like the Korean women. <laughs> Try to be like me. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> there are Korean women who are so fed up with men that they have stopped having babies. They have stopped, they have stopped having babies. They have stopped dating. They stopped and they have married. literally said, I'd rather be single and by myself than be with a man. And y'all think it's just black women saying that yeah, shit. Yeah, I understand. We gotta okay. stop marketing black love so much. Cause we black marketing black love so much has made women fall for anything that looks like love. Love. Yeah. And I by the well, way, no. as much as I love black love, I no, think no, that No, no, no. I don't think marketing black love is what's making people fall for anything that looks like love. I think it's not understanding what real love is, is making people not fall for anything. I'm with the Korean woman. Because why am I going to keep reproducing for somebody and keep having your baby? You full of shit. You going you gonna, to dream, you going to get you some. They're not fucking at all. <laughs> They have shut the vagina. I'm gonna fuck. I never no, no, thought I wasn't gonna they fuck. Got, they shut the vaginas down. Yeah, they're not doing anything. Are, so they're not, they're not dating babies. outside their couple. Well, no, because Korea. They're not having kids. They're not let's having understand sex. this too. Oh, let's they're not having just too. babies. They're not getting married. Okay, but they're still fucking. I think they're still fucking. No, I they think said, they're not getting married. They may not be having babies. I don't think the men might have a problem with that. No, well, let's well, not get married and let's not have babies well, and let's just fuck. Their, I don't think what's no their man religion? Is gonna say, no, 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 Okay. And to me, I think I respect the discipline of it all because I will say this. If black women in America got together with Oprah Winfrey, or Michelle Obama and Beyonce, the, the rulers of the black community. <laughs> and let's add a little let's add a Erica Badu, Erica Badu in there. And, and, hold on. And we got to add uh, uh, Ayana, Dr. Ayana. We just need all of them. Those five. Ayana. Ayana. OK. You know, we just, and they say, ladies, we are no longer fucking if they're no longer paying bills. We're not fucking if they're doing something illegal. We're not fucking if they're not taking care of their kids. This is when I'm going to step up for the black men. I guarantee you, black men will fly straight. I promise y'all that. Well, here's the thing. There's a lot of black men already doing all those things. And the ones that aren't, are like, they keep bumping. Like, it's a they bunch bu of people that, bumping heads my, with that's people that point. That's, don't that, That's want. my point. But what I'm saying is, is that me as a man, mm. I do kind of have to judge 
not really, but kind of have to like look at you and be like, you fucked with him? Yeah. Damn. Why? The fuck you think of yourself? You fucked him? <laughs> so for me, but it's like, I also judge you how you feel after you meet me. I'm known for telling any woman I've ever been with, I don't judge you for what you did because I know you ain't met a real man yet. <laughs> oh, oh my I'm God. I'm not motherfucking I'm real, man. real man. I love you. Real man. I love it you works. so much. It works and it's true. I want to tell y'all something. There was a time when Ray used that's to be a relationship yeah, guru. <laughs> Look, and I don't know if you know this about me, but there was a time There was a time when Ray was a relationship guru and I used to sit there and be like, I don't know why yes, I would I ever that. take dating advice from Ray because I would never date Ray. But that's what I'm saying. But you would date Ray, but you would date Ray behind closed doors because you just said you fuck on brand. You still You would probably date Ray. You would claim no, Ray. But if Ray no. was having you a good time and not you, fun, not actual you. No, not, not, not a pretend no, hypothetical you. Actual you. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> who is an amazing person? Who is an amazing man? Who is an amazing man? Like, I gotta give you your disclaimer. I gotta give you your okay, disclaimer. Okay. An amazing man, Barack Obama. What about Barack? Who'd you fuck him? Well, he no, got the, please don't make Michelle come look for me yeah. on GP. <laughs> <laughs> they can deport me. What are you doing? <laughs> but, but, but my, but no, but no, I think so. Okay, so let's really to kind of give context to this Korean thing, right? Let's think about the fact that like Korean culture is much more homogenous than it is here, right? So yeah. like black women can say, I'm not dating any more black men, but then there's other people that we have yeah. access to. Or they, we could say black women in America can say, well, I'm not dating any more American men and yeah. there's other black men that you can date, right? Mm -hmm. Korea is very limited. If you talk to any black person that's ever lived in Korea, they'll tell you that people will stare at them all day, all day because yeah. it don't be a whole lot of it them, right? Match. I think that the only time that you hear news stories like that is when the government starts getting into people's closets, I mean, into people's bedrooms. Yep. And the reason why the government has a problem with these bitches not marrying anybody is because no children they gotta are take being care born. Of them. And so now, and I'm, I apologize for calling the ladies bitches, guys. I'm so sorry. I, I, okay. Again, product of the we, 80s we and the 90s. Brand. Yeah. We are on brand. <laughs> okay. We are on So brand. could it be like, yeah. so you we think that it's more brand. like a population control thing? With it's Korea? a population control thing. It's the same reason why all these abortion laws are coming up in this yeah. country now. Like, nobody really cares about life they care about taxes. taxes they care about continuing the we races we all need to be like that by the women way, not on welfare I, we got to take care of them when the man don't come and they understand that like the people well no because i mean it, they don't care if you end up on welfare when you have that baby mm -hmm. well, this is the thing like oh the same people that are like yo you can't have birth control you can't have an abortion they not funding schools they not funding health care for your kids like they want you to keep having babies so but really but really what it is if you ask certain people, is that the birth rate in the United States is also being impacted because although women in the United States or although young people in the United States are not maybe as drastic as the ones in Korea, like kids, like Gen Z kids, people in their yeah. late twenties, you can't afford a house. No, you can't pay for college. That's why. Pe that's why so many people have dogs now. Yeah, yeah. Because kids are fucking expensive. That's oh, for sure. Dogs, not weigh cats so much. Yo, somebody yeah. said plants are the new pets. No, pets seriously. are the new kids, and kids are the new exotic animals. Like you got to be really rich. No, kids are expensive. I pay like kids over four hundred a week animals. just in day. Are the fees. new exotic animal? You got to wow. be wealthy. That's or ridiculous. Or fucking wow. crazy. And, and that's ridiculous. Hold on, before we get to Godfather, because <laughs> daycare is ridiculous. Let's just go there. You want to speak about but Instagram? I just want to make sure we got that all before we go to the Godfather question. Sure. Let's so talk about this. I just wanted to ask if it was just my timeline that has noticed that there's a lot of like random flagging happening on Instagram, right? It's like things Very. that. Things that like just don't make sense. Like I saw somebody and it's the same person and a lot of people are pointing to having spoken in support of Palestine and they think that that's the reason why it's happening. But um, I saw somebody have a post be flagged because they it, whatever they were commenting on, they congratulated the person. They had a lot of great things to say about the person. And so the comment was said to violate their policies because it looked like spam, like they were trying to get followers. Mm. They had another post that was flagged where it was talking about somebody's podcast. And they said, you know, you're following your podcast should come with a pause warning. And that got flagged. But then at the same time, I'm still getting spam in my DMs. Sex. I'm still getting. You're still getting the, yeah. Like the sex yeah. bots. Uh -huh. I'm still sex getting. Bots, sure. um, Why like, is that okay? That's weird. You're so right. Like, I still. Yeah. I, I got, in my hidden requests, I got like 100 a day. I get All the time. <laughs> a day. Yeah. Every day. Do you want to see Wanting to have sex or trying to sell you followers yeah. or whatever. Uh -huh. So I'm curious as to what 
I don't know if they're trying to fix the algorithm and in trying to fix the algorithm, they fuck something up. I think, because you said you think it's too many people back there. I think they trying to train AI to do the job and AI yeah. is fucking up and AI, had, AI can't tell nuance. I, that's, that's good. Get I would say this. I think the algorithm is fucking up relationships. Yes. Because as a man, I would try to, like, I want to go to work. I want to go home. I want to take my woman <laughs> on a date. I want to take her places. And then I get on Instagram. You see all these and ass. And the algorithm sends me 150 <laughs> asses. Now I'm Just like, shaking. this is supposed to be here for me. Why is it here? <laughs> well, Raymond. I, I, by the way, let me say one more thing. I unfollowed all big booty accounts. <laughs> I unfollowed all big booty accounts. And they still got the popping big, up in yeah. my fucking algorithm. Because they I know what you like. like. I think, I think because stop, we're in Atlanta. They know what you like, though. To tease me mm -hmm. because I don't, I'm not there anymore. <laughs> let me, let me fuck we're in Atlanta. Atlanta. Let me fuck your eyes up. It's because you're in Atlanta. It's because we're in Atlanta. The algorithms at this point are picking up. Like, have you guys ever seen when you get a new phone, when you're setting up your new phone, yep. it asks you if you'll allow it to I, listen. I'll have to track. Right? Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I'm, an, I'm a black immigrant. They're following me anyways. For listen sure. to everything, guys. Listen to everything. But what that means is it's picking up what's around you. Mm -hmm. And then not just picking up what's being said around you, but if I stand next to you, my phone going to start sending me you know, mm. higher end designer it, products it, it, because it, they know yeah, that you was, bought two thousand dollars sneakers. I'm not seeing no more Air Maxes uh, on my phone. Too. Polo. <laughs> you said, you said, you see polo. polo on a fucking yep. absolutely, this. absolutely. The algorithm needs to stay out of relationships. But I don't here, mind but here, shit the shop. so why are you trying to say that really if he's if he's around like women Please. that have their phone, right? And but if you're around if you're around men that are still following a hundred thousand big booty accounts, that they're gonna be sense. like, "Oh, well, Ray likes well, what big the booty fuck accounts." Am I supposed to do algorithm? Jack, it's Jack's <laughs> fault. I'm trying to be. It's right. Jack's fault. <laughs> it's Jack. Damn, son. <laughs> it's Jack's fault. It's Jack's fault. But I'm gonna but I'm tell you, I'm gonna really fuck y'all head up. So I made a joke to a friend of mine who works in tech that I think my phone reads my mind, right? And we've no, all seriously. said that. We've all, all had that, no, that experience where like, I'm sitting in the house by myself. I know I did not open my mouth and say the word Starbucks, but in my brain and in my heart, Girl. I needed a coffee. And as soon as I opened my phone, here goes that Starbucks ad, right? Mm -hmm. right. Or I went to, I went to, um, I used to work at a co-work space. Shout out to Switch Yards, because I love them. Um, and I sat with someone and she was letting me use the charger in her car so I could call an Uber because my phone had died. And she's packing up her bag. And I looked at the bag. And I'm like, oh, this is a dope bag. I never said a word to her. <laughs> I get home. That exact bag is in my phone. And my friend goes, oh, yeah, they were testing um, the phone being able to read your brainwaves like three, four years ago. Mm -hmm. Really? I have a movie that I'm going to make for just for this. You got a Godfather question because I don't want we run over time. No, we don't have okay, a Godfather so question. This was amazing. Wait, 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 real quick. I'm sorry. Go I'm ahead. so sorry. Some... How does that movie question work? Because she doesn't have it. What's the Godfather question? No, what's well, that? Well, Godfather basically is the question we ask about like dad, like dad, so like parents. Something like, that's going uh, on that has like, to like, pertain like to being like, a parent, was, was, a dad uh, in uh, society. Uh, we talk about music, we talk about everything, but let's talk about Ray as a father, yeah, or as a mother, or okay. raising kids. And I was sorry, that's usually the last. But we kind of, kind of touched we kinda on it, though, right? Like, did we have one? Yeah. We kind of did when we talk about sexy Ray. Yeah. That's the Godfather subject. All right, so I have a question for you. What are the rules about electronics at your house? You have a thirteen-year-old, a fifteen-year-old, and a six-year-old. Damn, he's fifteen. Fifteen. Jesus Christ, he's crazy. sixteen this year. Okay, um, fifteen-year-old and a six-year-old. My fifteen-year-old has full access to it. Uh, I don't care because mm. I want him to be prepared for the real world and that my six-year-old has an iPad and a phone, restricted. but we, we restrict it from her because, and by the way, I'm probably going to start doing more restriction because I saw a video where a guy said, give your kids moments to be bored mm -hmm. so they can be more creative because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. if they're just looking at their phone they're not thinking creatively. Mm -hmm. So oh. with that being said, that's my story. Like, that is a Godfather question. My story is, is that my... My daughter, especially my daughter, I protect her. My son, I do my best to teach him, prepare him. I prepare my son and I protect my daughter. Mm. Is that because I, of gender or is that because of age? That's because of gender and um, that's because of gender. Okay. My daughter, I, like, <laughs> like, I, as a man, I just think our job is to, I think our job is to prepare our sons and protect our daughters. And I think a woman's job is to prepare their daughters and protect their sons okay yeah. that's fair that and, makes sense and for me i that's how i live my life like it's like like my daughter i, I i'm just like like i go home early just to make sure i kiss her good night and she Aww. sees me like i never yeah. thought like that for my son because he's a boy yeah but I, I want my daughter to know that 
her dad loves her and that a man is will give you effort if he loves you. And that's why she'll never date somebody the same age as her child. That's why she'll always be on brand. Oh, that's gosh. why no boy could be like, I just want to she'll you. always be on brand. My daughter, my daughter is six. My daughter has never flown coach. Oh, my, my daughter will tell you. Does she need a bestie? No, my daughter will. No, she does. And she will tell you. I'll send, am, Lima, I'll send my you, baby over there. Like, I was telling my daughter, I was like, what do you want to do for spring break? And Jen's right there. She was like, Paris, yeah, L.A., mm -hmm. New York, and mm -hmm. I think she said, uh, and I was like, well, what about Orlando? And she said, in Orlando. Like, <laughs> yeah. She said, sure. Orlando sure, Dad. Orlando works for me. Sure. Everything yes, else. Disney World is good. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay, real quick follow-up question. Go Do ahead. you check your, son, your son's phone? No. I would encourage you to check His your son's phone. Does. Okay, okay. That's, That's good. All right. His mother does. Like okay. when my son gets in trouble with the women in the house, because it was one time my aunt sent me a message and she was like, little Raymond lied to me earlier and I confronted him and he was like, you shouldn't have believed me. And then she was like, he said that, then he started laughing and she was so hurt by it. And I was like, why the fuck did you believe him? <laughs> <laughs> like, it was funny to me. It's like, you're falling for his bullshit. He's mid, but he's smart. But I teach my kids everything is a negotiation. That's how I teach them. Mm. Every, everything. If my daughter wants me to do something, sit me down and explain to me why I should do it. Come on. So you are yes. preparing oh, your daughter. Preparing, okay. I'm preparing how to, like, yeah, it's, it's hard though. Yeah. Because uh, she, 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 she definitely expects. And, <laughs> and, and, and she got you. She got your heart in, a, in her hand. Have a problem <laughs> if you don't give. So her mom has to interfere a lot with our issues because I'm like. <laughs> What do you want me to do? I'm gonna say yes. She's crying. I don't know what to do. And she was like, she's fucking running game. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they run anyway, game. We gotta wrap. We gotta wrap. <laughs> this is incredible, Ty. You are incredible. Yeah, uh, yeah. Welcome yes, anytime. I love Thank opinionated you. motherfuckers. Thank this you. is the Culture Report. This is the God Show. Like, share, subscribe. Join our community. And we are out. Let's out. go. Yeah. My nigga, you said some of the clothes. Fuck on brand. Yo, I need a fuck on brand.